Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Uh, happy to be here today with Laurent. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining. Uh, Laurent, uh, Orange and uh, Lenovo started a joint innovation partnership a couple of years ago, and, and we're here to talk to you about some of the key findings that we have uh, through this journey. Uh, you might know Lenovo for uh, being the number one in PC. Uh, that's true. You might know Lenovo for being number one in bringing to 5G phones to the market. That's also true. Uh, or perhaps you know Lenovo for being the number one in building supercomputer. That's also true. Uh, but today, I'm going to talk to you about what Lenovo is doing with a communication service provider in the telco space across 180 markets around, around the world. So. The value proposition that we have for the communication service provider for you guys is really around four pillars, right? The first one is around performance, uh, performance and optimization. We, we really learn uh, how to optimize systems by the design of the motherboard, by optimizing Linux, by using the right acceleration card at the right time, so that we hold over 153 world record on x86, putting us in the first position high-performance computing, and we believe this is important when we're talking about NFV because optimization and performance is pretty much the name of the game. So we took that craftsmanship, that know-how and expertise in high-performance computing and brought it to a telco context. Same thing with our being global and customer-friendly. Um, we are doing business across 180 markets with an incredible footprint and delivering and while maintaining our number one in customer satisfaction year over year. Same thing as deploying is scale. Again, for NFV, such as uh, performance and optimization is important, but scale is also the name of the game here. Deploying servers by the kilometer is the expertise of Lenovo. We have built a solid practice with the hyperscaler, where six of the top 10 hyperscalers in the world are actually using our technology, our servers. So that, again, is something that we believe is quite relevant in our value proposition to you guys. And finally, reliability. We all know the importance of having those systems available. And besides the mainframe, who is the only system ahead of us from IBM, we're the only, one, the only x86 server that have maintained year after year the 5.9 reliability in our, in our product uh, uh, every year. Okay? So this is the value proposition that we bring to the market. And, and really, what we're trying to do with you guys is to accelerate and automate the time it takes to bring your, your infrastructure to the market, right? And we do this with a couple of things. First of all, we do it with having a very comprehensive set of hardware solutions. So we have a, a portfolio of servers, storage, and networking for the data center and for the edge computing. We do this with our organic software development and partnering with the unbiased ecosystem of third-party software to go on top of that. And that is quite important because we, we actually integrate, we validate, we test, we optimize, and we support these solutions with our professional services. So you as a service provider have the benefit of being faster to market because we took care of that integration, optimization, and support, and, being, and having the guarantee of the performance that we can deliver as part of our solution on the NFVI. So, Integrated, validated support. Here's an example on the comprehensive portfolio. We have some servers, <coughs> some storage, and some, and, and some, uh, and some switches, uh, and storage, network servers, yeah, sorry, <laughs> and edge servers as well. But what we have developed is a lot of intelligent artifi uh, artificial intelligence component to being able to detect if a server is going to have a failure, to look at the different components and being able to, based on all the analysis of the logs from all the different components, and being able to shut down a bracket in the memory, or being able to advise you to this, this part is about the experience of failure, and that is crucial, especially if you have a distributed environment at the edge, being able to predict a failure and being able to anticipate the maintenance and take an action on it. So we have put a lot of investment into our, into our ISDDC solution with artificial intelligence in, 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 in development. We have also partnered with a best of breed virtualization layer. We work with pretty much all of them, and we have developed some automation framework that makes it very easy for you to deploy uh, a completely new infrastructure. And we call that the Lenovo Open Cloud. And what that allows you to do is really to select the components that you're going to be, that you're purchasing. We deliver directly to your premise the equipment loaded with the software, pre-cable and everything. And basically, as soon as you turn it on, we have a bunch of Ansible script that goes and automate the, up the firmware update, 
go and automate the server uh, installation, the security patches and all that. So within a few hours, entirely automated, you have a fully operational system. And we obviously partner and test with some of the more key customers, uh, partners out there, uh, such as Fortinet, Atrinet, uh, NFware, and much more. So we really took that IT approach and brought it to the telecommunication world. We're, we are an IT company at the base. We know how to optimize high-performance computing. We know how to deploy at scale, but what we didn't really know is our tel the telecom context. So we work closely with OPNFV organization in order to develop a, a comprehensive solution of NFVI solution that is tested and validated by the, open, uh, by the OPNFV organization. And I've mentioned a few times that the two of the key pillars of our value proposition to you is around performance, scalability, and cost performance. And that is important to realize, and that, that leads to the joint innovation program that we have with Orange, is understanding the, um, the performance is one thing, but understanding the power consumption is another thing, and understanding the cost is a different thing. So finding the right balance as to how much acceleration do I need to put for this workload without compromising my power envelope, or how much performance will I gain without blowing my budget uh, altogether. So it's that, these components that we're trying to focus is where do we apply acceleration to some of the workloads, where does it make sense, where does it not make sense. And I can give you some of the examples that we have experienced so far uh, uh, on the market, working with customers like you. Basically, we, we did a project with the help of Fortinet, and there is actually a, pub a publication that is coming out or is already out from the EANTC who tested and validated that solution. Uh, and basically, what we have done here is the E node B of a mobile edge core coming back to the EPC. We, there's an encryption communication that's happening in between the two. And we use Intel QAT acceleration con to encrypt that traffic instead of consuming it on the server. And that made a lot of sense um, to offload some of the performance, some of the workloads on the central CPU, but also on the performance because that, that subscribe line, that encryption line is pretty much solicited all the time. And we were able to get two to three times better performance than using the central CPU. So in that case, that made a lot of sense. On the radio access as well, right? If you're going to be deploying a virtual RAN, it's quite important to, you can do it with a centralized CPU, but in some of the use cases, we've got up to 19 times better performance by offloading some of these functions on FPGAs. Similar with GPUs, we've done a program on edge computing where actually we have a bunch of feeds from video cameras and the, the requirements on the backhaul to bring the traffic to the central data center is too, it's too big and we can't, we can't afford it basically. The consumption of the bandwidth is too high. So we've deployed the distributed GPU and made sure that these this application directly at the edge is able to read the license plate at the corner of a street of all the cars driving back and extracting the value and just uploading the license plate number. I don't need to have the full frame in all the four the, the high quality image for that, right? And same thing with smart NICs, which probably a lot of you guys are already using, the ability to use a smart NIC to offload some of the OVS and get a lot more performance out of it. So these are areas where we already experience uh, some gain in performance, but what we wanted to measure with Orange is, well, what are the power implications of those gains, and how, can, how do we compare that? So at this stage, I'll introduce uh, my friend Laurent from Orange to uh, walk us through the, the rest. Thank you, uh, Charles. Um, okay, so I'm uh, Laurent Darico. I'm head of um, infrastructure innovation and engineering uh, department in Orange Labs uh, Networks. Uh, as you know, Orange uh, is a major telco in Europe and Africa and also operates uh, worldwide for business. Um, well, as we are facing uh, many uh, transformation, uh, we have developed new way of co collaborating and, um, with open communities, with initiatives like CNTT, and also um, with uh, some partnerships like uh, the one we have with uh, Lenovo. So, uh, about this partnership, yeah. Um, um, objective was to be able um, to really uh, have a clear view on infrastructure innovation and what we can do to optimize infrastructure. Um, a se uh, second point uh, uh, is uh, also to, to ensure that all the new workload we will put on this infrastructure 
infrastructure, uh, we will be able to handle them in the best way, with the best performance. So we've set up uh, a joint uh, innovation partnership uh, that uh, we handled in a let's, quite agile mode, let's say. Um, we've started uh, um, building uh, joint uh, labs uh, one in uh, Rennes, in Orange Labs, and one in Raleigh, in uh, Lenovo Labs. Uh, then, uh, the first year, uh, we focused uh, on uh, on-demand composable infrastructure and uh, also on energy consumption uh, analysis. And then, uh, the second year, we focused on uh, data plane acceleration, and uh, we will uh, explain uh, this uh, with uh, Charles. Perhaps you, you can say uh, your uh, word on the partnership. Absolutely, and this was very interesting for us as well because we're getting real live use case and real problem to solve from Orange, and not just engineer in our lab thinking of problems that we could solve. Uh, we had the benefit through this collaboration and this partnership to get ex real solution, real problem that we had. We applied our engineering and, and expertise to to solve. Okay, so the first focus was uh, on on-demand composable infrastructure. Uh, the point is that uh, we are facing uh, many, many types of uh, VNF. Um, so the question is, uh, uh, should we uh, use a GPU, FPGA, a lot of drives and memories uh, uh, everywhere in each server? Um, of course not. Of course, we will have to optimize uh, infrastructure um, in the, for each type of need, probably. And one way uh, to, uh, to do this uh, could be to, to use on-demand composable infrastructure. So, Charles, perhaps yes. you could explain. So we started that from there, because one of the reality of the edge is that you do not have unlimited space, you do not have unlimited power, electricity, and, and most likely not unlimited budget as well. <laughs> so we looked at a, using Intel rack scale design to find a solution that how can we still address the performance and the need for some application to take advantage of acceleration technique without having a GPU, for example, in every single server in that location that will blow the budget, most likely, and, and also consume a tremendous amount of power. So what we have worked is on using the Intel rack scale design to create pools of resources. So at a specific rack, not every server has all these cards, but we create a pool of GPUs or a pool of FPGAs, and while we had servers that only had compute capabilities, and through the software piece that we have developed using Redfish interfaces on the API, we allow the capability to say, well, at that moment, an application using video processing is moved to that edge location and therefore would benefit from a GPU acceleration. And what happens through the software manipulation is we're able to map that compute node and actually map it to a virtual to a GPU residing somewhere in that pool of available resources on that location. So the last thing you want to do is have a technician dispatch to the edge location uh, with a GPU card, open up the server do, with all the risks that that imply and have an interruption and in integrate a, 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 an acceleration card. So through that software, we're able to dynamically map a compute resource to a pool of available resources in a one-to-one -one or in a one-to-many. So you could have that FPGA shared across four uh, for compute node, for example. Uh, and now we're actually pushing the limit. If you want to visit our Lenovo booth, is we more or less replicated an environment uh, with uh, the, the telco environment in Edge and Central Office where we had deployed a pool of resources at the Intel booth, right? Where we have those acceleration con and the Edge compute, which are small Lenovo servers at the Lenovo booth. And you'll have some video processing that you can compare, hey, is it better to have it locally or even using a central, a central um, a remote, uh, remote location to use that acceleration card, and you'll find and able to compare the performance implication that that bring to the solution. But the objective here was really to create pool of resources and through software man, um, dynamically allocate these acceleration techniques when and where needed, and then free up the resource when the application is moved on. Yeah. So what uh, did we find? Well, thanks to um, Lenovo partnership, we were able to explore several types of um, hardware. Uh, we saw that it works. Uh, we are able, with a unified UI, um, 
to, to compose uh, the hardware and to, and to decide uh, with a simplified um, way how to use it. So, okay. Um, but, in fact, even if it's a good step uh, and in some way to, to have some optimization, uh, we, we find that uh, today for us it's quite difficult to, to, to use it directly for, for network and, and telco use cases. And um, uh, perhaps uh, there are some limitations on, on some parts, uh, for example, or for FPG, uh, that we, we wanted to, 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 um, to directly uh, search if using FPG directly uh, is not uh, another way to handle it, for example, and that was the focus of, of the second year. Uh, but uh, also, um, it depends uh, many about the ecosystem and right. on how VNF provider we will, um, will be able to really take advantage about on-demand composable infrastructure. If we have the software that uh, right under this, then we will be able to benefit from optimization. And, and that's, that's perhaps a good, a, good, uh, a good opportunity for anybody here. Uh, we know that that technology, and we've proven that they have, the technology works, but there's a, a, there's a demand for some of the software solution out there to take up, a, a, advantage. Clearly. Actually, this is a good question. This is yeah. a good point around. Uh, we yeah, yeah, yeah. About <laughs> we, how do we, we had the second topic, the, fir the first. The year. first stuff. Yeah, it, it was about energy consumption, and um, of course, uh, when we are trying to optimize or deciding uh, which infrastructure we should use, um, we we do not enough take in account energy consumption. Yeah. Um, it has, of course, uh, many uh, uh, points after that about cost, of course, about uh, uh, consequence and uh, strategic uh, commitment from a range, from Renovo, around climate, and, and things like that. Um, we, we thought that uh, this point is not uh, enough uh, under the light, uh, and we want to propose something to, to better uh, uh, analyze it and be able to monitor really um, energy consumption while we are doing uh, tests. Perhaps and, and you, you actually, can explain where, what you exactly have done. no because Laurent is right. There was no uh, no framework to which we could measure and benchmark the power consumption versus the performance gain. Uh, and in order to address that, we again look at what is available in open in, in OPNFV. And it, there's a lot of uh, through the yardstick infrastructure. There's a lot of components available to measure performance. None of them related to to the power consumption. So through this partnership, Lenovo and Orange developed a a plugin by the, providing a non non-intrusive uh, way to measure the power, right? not having a probe directly, so it's a non-intrusive way. We submitted that a couple of days ago to the Yardstick uh, organization, to OP OPNFV, so that should be part of the standard, so that's part of the contribution back. And what we're able to do is very granular, in a very granular manner, able to, to measure the performance measure the performance as we were expected, but also to provide the power consumption at the same time. So it's one thing to say, hey, well, now I'm adding a network adapter and smart NIC that will perform this task, and we're able to clearly measure the performance, and now we're able to map that to the power it draw from the system so that we have a better business view where does it make sense and what is the gain, how much do we are, are we paying in electricity for that additional performance. And we're able to do this with every single component of, of, of the system, and a lot of what our team have been validating is the accuracy of it. Yeah. Uh, so we measured it at the server level, we measured it in software, we measured it from a, a, the power outlet directly. So there were multiple enhancements that went into that plugin that was submitted to Yorkstead to make sure that the, perform the power consumption is quite accurate and precise. Yeah, so that was our first point. Um, the second one, uh, as you said, uh, we saw that um, PCI the, um, devices uh, have now um, a consumption that is significant. And um, today, uh, what is uh, um, in the standards and also in the tools is not sufficient to really uh, analyze in the right way uh, this consumption compared to the server one. So probably we will have to to go ahead to, to enhance what is in standards and tooling to, to be able to really measure 
uh, this consumption. Um, also, uh, as we saw, uh, we, we really need to have complete monitoring of consumption while we are doing performance tests, and what we provide together is a way that we share uh, mm. to, to really do so within Yardseek. And actually, we, we, as a, as a follow-up to this, actually, we challenged our team to look at more than just a full system, but provide in Yardstick an ability to measure uh, at a VM level and at a container level, so that we have even more granularity. Okay. More to come. Um, so one of the things as well that Laurent and I experienced when we're, looking with the, we're working with the team on this is the, 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 um, how do we apply resiliency or redundancy to, to our systems, and uh, especially when we're using SRIOV, right? In the context of SRIOV, you'll have two physical network adapters going to your network, and in order to map that to your application, the VNF needs to, be a, needs to have two virtual adapter as well, two VNIC, and have the awareness that to bound them to create a teaming among the two virtual adapters. So it's really depending upon the software provider, the VNF in this case, to actually write up an application that is making it VNF uh, aware of the multiple link, and also aware in case of a physical failure, the ability to, re to, to apply the NIC resiliency and fail over to the different adapter. So that, was, that caused us a problem because each and single time we needed to have the VNF or the software vendor having that concept, changing their software, and giving uh, the software release back to us so that we can con continue the test. Um, in order to address that problem, we worked with a company called Melanox, where we tested their CX4, CX5, CX6 adapter, where basically the adapter itself is responsible still for the physical connectivity with the two, network, uh, the two physical link, but also the, phys the, the NIC, the physical adapter, has that resiliency in the NIC teaming or bounding that is available directly at the card. Therefore, from a VNF perspective, the application only still has one NIC, one network adapter, as usual, doesn't change anything, you know, and it, in case of a failure, it's really upon the network adapter to handle that. So what is different here is that from a VNF perspective, there is only one link to the network adapter, and it's up to the network adapter to handle that, that uh, resiliency on the physical layer. Some of the drawback there that we talked about was actually, hey, we need to certify that into making it... Uh, yeah, 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 I think uh, we have it. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> so, so uh, in fact, um, we are facing um, some constraints uh, that some, that in some cases, uh, offloading can help to, to simplify this. But to do so, uh, we need the software uh, and probably a standard software, because in the other case, yeah. each VNF will have to deal with, with the different hardware. And, well, probably we, we will not uh, optimize in that way. So the, the next point is probably to be able to have uh, common ways to handle these uh, cases. Well, perhaps uh, just a few words on what we are working uh, now. Uh, well, we, we are still uh, working on offloading, and um, uh, in particular on FPGA, as I previously told. Uh, we are working on FPGA itself to see how we can optimize. But uh, it raises um, many questions. Uh, when you're using uh, FPGA, in uh, which uh, use cases, uh, also, how do we uh, handle uh, lifecycle management for, for this? And so that's what we are working on together right now. This year, exactly. Well, we pretty much reached the end of our, our, of, our, of our presentation, and we'll certainly try to come back and share more of some of the innovation that we have done together. Uh, maybe as a summary, what I wanted to point out is I've, I've articulated the value proposition to you guys from Lenovo being around high-performance computing, be, being about reliability and, and global, global mar operating in all the global market. But really, as this example testify of it, the trust and the partnership and, that we have with the market and with our customer is really what is the most important important to us. The, I think that we need to, and it's been addressed through a few of these sessions already in this conference, uh, the, partner, the, the supplier, vendor, uh, 
customer supplier relationship has to evolve as we're tackling together these new challenges and working in a collaborative way in a trusted partnership like we have with Orange in order to look at some real issue and try to find solutions with what we can bring to the table and also bring other vendors to the table to address that and, 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 and solve the solution and uh, find a solution and give it back to uh, organizations such as uh, Open NAV, for example. Yeah, and uh, on Orange side, uh, Lenovo partnerships really allow us to completely explore the ecosystem of infrastructure with uh, yeah. uh, multiple suppliers uh, and, uh, and to really see how we can uh, expect to optimize our infrastructures in Perfect. multiple ways. So that's the point. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.